Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. Of course, this is a holiday that never really made it over to the UK, which makes sense. I always assumed it would do. Companies love that stuff. Forget that, though, because let us use the name and be thankful for things in professional wrestling. The first of which is that during this November season, it ain't like it was back in the day where the WWF decided, you know what you're going to get? This giant, overly colourful turkey that's going to haunt your dreams forevermore. Because instead, there is some really cool stuff happening right now in sports and entertainment. So I, Simon Miller, thought we should celebrate this together. Sound good? Great? Let's go. Number 10, the United States women's title. So it was totally mad this just came into existence because Nick Aldis on SmackDown went, oh, hi, I have revealed this championship belt. But look, sometimes beggars can't be choosers. We should have done this years ago. NXT actually beat the main roster to this because we got the Women's North American Championship a few months ago. But maybe that was being used as some sort of a testing ground because we get to the end of 2024 and yeah, we're good to go. Now I'm sure this will be out of date in a blink of an eye given when I am recording it and how much WWE TV is on the cards. But I am still hoping and pimping for Chelsea Green. She should absolutely be the first ever Women's United States Champion because that kind of character... Well, she could run it for the rest of her career. It also means that the likes of Bailey and Naomi will have something to fight over when they're not in the world championship scene. Because that is something that WWE has been a little bit bad at in the past. So this is totally a net positive. And if we get it right and we allow this belt to feel important, well, Uda Lally, this is going to be good all round. No, I'm not holding a belt, which means I'm just clenching my fist. But weird guy. Number nine, the Bloodline Civil War, which is happening in like two weeks. Do you know how big that is? It's essentially been going on for the last four years. Now, I would say coming to an end, but that would not be true because we still need the big singles match between Roman Reigns and Solo Zokoa. Then there's everything with Jacob for two. Let's talk about the Survivor Series. If all of a sudden The Rock came out at the end, it was all like, if you smell, I am Bloodline 2.0. Well, it wouldn't be that much of a shock. However, you also have the fact that here we are at the end of the year and Roman Reigns is finally, after all this time, the super duper whooper mega baby face the WWE has always wanted. So I am one for thankful for that. Remember what it's like back in 2014 in Suffering Succotash? We can finally move on. But also, Jimmy Uso has benefited from this. Jay Uso is like a star in his own stratosphere. And Sami Zayn last year at the Elimination Chamber, well, people were saying he should be the guy to beat Roman Reigns for the WWE title. And that was totally, totally fabo. All of this has also been so good that Paul Heyman has become a babyface. And believe you me, there was a time within the WWE that wouldn't have been possible. War Games is also going to be a ton of fun and you know you're going to get a big surprise at the end. So yeah, once again, when I search my tum-tum, all of this deserves a lot more praise. Number eight, the Death Riders. Or the BCC, the Riders of Death, John Moxley's crew. Call them whatever the flub you want. Now, of course, there are some naysayers, because there's always some naysayers. But if we bring this down to the bottom line, AEW have heard some of your criticisms and have gone, OK, we're going to address them. And we're going to put this all on John Moxley's head. And he is going out there really trying to make All Elite Wrestling a better product. But it means we now have a central storyline that is evolving over both Dynamite and Collision. And also, we are now going back to the OG stars. I mean, there's Darby Allen, there's Daniel Garcia, and there's Private Party. We have said to everybody, all right, they have been there since day one. Now we're going to try and push them. It also sounds like come 2025, AEW is going to start running smaller buildings so the crowd feels louder and there's a better atmosphere. And this is all the things that people have been asking for. So you can't make a fuss now. You've got to give them time. You've also got John Moxley talking about the fact that he is the AEW World Champion. And that means everything. Listen, I'm not saying that it's perfect. And I am saying we have to give it a few weeks and months. But there was a time in the summer where nobody thought we were going to do anything. Well, this totally proves you wrong. I mean, it just means that Tony Khan does have his ear to the ground and he is listening. And even if these things aren't evolving in the way that you personally want, at least they're evolving. I actually think it puts AEW in line for a really good 2025. We shall wait and see. Number seven, there is more high quality wrestling than ever. I mean, it is insane. At any point during any week, you could turn on most promotions and whip, bam, boom. There's an amazing match that's going to make you feel good. And no, that doesn't equal TV ratings. People always throw that in there. But there was definitely a time in the past 
Well, you didn't get anything like this, and in fact, television was mostly squash matches. I mean, even if you go to the Attitude Era, most of the fights are like when they go three minutes, and then there's going to be a big swerve, swerve, swerve at the end. And listen, it worked, but it was very of its time. So the business was always going to evolve. In terms of fan entertainment, it's most definitely gone in the right direction. I mean, as of me talking to you, we just had that awesome Sheamus versus Braun Breaker match on Raw. Remember that AEW Dynamite tag team match between FTR and the House of Black? That was brilliant. But if you could use a time machine, and that's what you chose to do with it, which would be totally mad, I think the compare and contrastness in your brain would send you a little bit loopy, because we have come a long way. It's also the same for TNA New Japan, and there are so many streaming sites where you can access the independent scene. So it just goes back to what I just said. At no point in your life right now should you be able to go, oh, no, I can't watch a pay-per-view level match because they are literally being crapped out all the time. I shouldn't have said it like that. It also means there's a better ecosystem overall when it comes to the industry. And that provides more opportunities for the wrestlers. Once again, I'm never going to get mad about that. Number six, two hour roars. So if I've got this right, we're meant to be thankful for things that are happening in the moment. <laughs> for the last few weeks, Raw has only been 120 minutes. And I think it's been bloody fantastic. Now, this is not going to be the case come 2025 and both on Monday nights and SmackDown. We're going to get three hour programs. But months more, I just want to say thank you very much to WWE. Because while I can see the pros of a three hour show, it gives the talent more opportunities. In terms of a fan, I just think it's been a blast. And I haven't got to that third hour where sometimes I want to fall asleep. I'm just saying, man, it happens. I mean, the show's just zoomed by, which makes me feel good in my tootsie toes. But now, yeah, there is something else to this. When we do get to 2025, and they go back to 180 minutes, even if here and there they aren't hitting in the same way, I can look through the roster and go, well, at least they're getting more of a chance. But yeah, as we are here in November 2024, bingo. I am very thankful. Number five, Triple H's approach to booking. So Vince McMahon stepping away from the WWE has been one of the best things that's happened in that company for decades. I mean, there were just so many elements that we should have pushed forward. And finally, over the last couple of years, we have. I mean, even now, the novelty of having Paul Levesque as our booker has fizzled out. That's just life. But I don't care what you say, man. Both Raw and SmackDown are infinitely better. I mean, let's not overcomplicate this. Let's keep it nice and simple. Ever since this change, wrestling has improved. I mean, whether it's the little things like we're allowed to say belt, wrestler, or hospital, you also have Michael Cole, who has all the freedom in the world. And go and look at the general consensus when it comes to Mike. Now, all of a sudden, everybody thinks he's great. And I wonder what changed. It just feels like every single thing has moved forward. And when you are watching Raw, you have to have an eye like a hawk because sometimes stories are revolving in the background. And when you do that, you have to make sure that if the audience member did miss it, they still get the information, and that's called nuance. So I am just really enjoying it. Let's look at it this way. Under the old regime, do you think the Motor City Machine Guns would ever have been the tag team champions? I tell you right now, they wouldn't have been. And if anybody deserves their shot, well, it's those two. There's the thanks again. Number four, the WWE ID program. So we go back to the old guard once again because Jim Ross has talked about this. Vince McMahon would often go, ha, 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 I don't really care about the independent scene. And good old JR would be like, uh, if you look at our roster, a lot of our stars have come from that scene. So maybe actually you should give a damn. Jump forward to 2024 though, and not only does WWE care, but we do have the WWE ID program, which is about identifying independent wrestlers and giving them some money and say, hey, you can still work everywhere, but we want to support you on your journey. Now, of course, that could all of a sudden change and then we'll come back and have a conversation. But right now, if you are an up and coming talent and you know the world is your oyster and you're being supported by the big leagues, that sounds absolutely brilliant. It just means you may actually be able to be a professional wrestler. And here's the caveat, because I see a lot of people getting mad about this. If you don't want to work for WWE, then you shouldn't sign it. That would be on you. The first round of signings as well have ticked all of these boxes, and it really should get rid of an issue that may have plagued many a superstar. I bet there's a bunch of wrestlers out there that could have gone all the way to the top, but they weren't able to because once again, they didn't have the support. It also balances out the system because of course we have the NIL program, which is focused on recruiting college athletes. And if you are going to do that, you absolutely should go the other way and look at independent wrestlers. I mean, I'm sure you can figure that one out for yourself. So I really am excited to see this develop and I hope it does say positive. At the moment, 
It's a win-win all round. Number three, CM Punk is flying. So this is a weird one, and we do have to go back to November 2023, because while there was a lot of hoopla about CM Punk returning to WWE, instantly the same old crew was like, well, it's not going to last long. He's so going to fall out with management and everyone is totally bold. Well, here we are 12 months later, and not only do CM Punk and WWE seem tighter than ever, but he could have potentially had the match of the year with Drew McIntyre in the Hell in a Cell, and he's dipping his toe into the NXT waters, because it sounds like he's looking to the future, and he would like to inspire younger talent. Everybody seems to be happy too, which is my most important takeaway, because they are human beings. That makes 2025 pretty damn exciting. I mean, we still need the Seth Rollins feud, the Roman Reigns feud, the Gunther feud. There is a part of me, this part right here, that thinks in the new year, CM Punk could become the world heavyweight champion. <laughs> so get ready for those hot takes. It just feels like Punk is now in the environment that he always wanted to be in, so there isn't going to be any shade. And ultimately, I think wrestling is better with CM Punk in it. So it's nice that he's feeling good about it. And again, yes, I just mentioned all of those programs. I need them in my life. Especially that Roman Reigns one with Paul Heyman in the middle. I mean, that really could blow everybody's brains. And I'm a content creator, so that sounds great. Number two, NXT is growing. Now I do understand the love and the nostalgia for the black and gold era of NXT. I am one of those guys. But sometimes when I sit down and really ponder on this, I actually think NXT right now could be in the best position ever. Because given what it's meant to be, you always need to be developing brand new talent, but you also want to have stars that are ready to be pushed up onto the main roster. So yeah, go watch the most recent episode of NXT. That's exactly what we've got. I also enjoy seeing brand new wrestlers get better in front of our eyes, because then you can perform a personal connection with them. And <laughs> just look at that women's division. If that isn't going to prop up the main roster for years to come... Well, that sentence ends there because the evidence is in front of my face. It most definitely is. The TNA talent exchange was just super fun as well. And we're now getting all these special shows like the one we did in the ECW arena. So it's not like we're stuck in the PC. We are out there and having a good time. And I know some people lose their mind over the silly side of NXT. But you know me. I'm still the same old G. And I love goofy wrestling for life. Also, the proof is in the pudding. Recently, Chase U had to break up. And I was actually devastated. So don't you come into my house and tell me it doesn't work. They hit it out the park. Number one, AEW finding its groove again. So this is going to set fire to people, which is fine. Do it in the comments. But we have already touched upon this, but I wanted to make it its own entry because I do believe that AEW has listened to the fans. They've got their brand new TV deal. So in 2025, much like the Empire, they're going to get a new groove. It's way more subtle than just that too, because look at the last few months. Not only did we see Brian Danielson actually get murdered inside a wrestling ring, but you also have somebody like Harley Cameron, who is the most unhinged entertaining person ever. I know that sounds weird, but you need to have both sides of wrestling. You need the serious and the not so serious. And when I look at those two entities kind of like magnets, well, I think it rules. There's also the homegrown talent, which we've also already got into that are in line for a mega push but you also have the art of a surprise. At any time, Nigel McGuinness could be having another match. The Hurt Syndicate have also proved that sometimes when you do point the finger and go, Neh, they're just ex-WWE guys, you are not doing them the right service. And then you have people like Takeshita or Commander or Flippin' Akada. So you've got the international wrestling scene down too. And look, maybe it won't work, but that's not the point. I just appreciate the fact that AEW are trying to take their next step forward. And as a fan, that's all I can ask. And sure, look, we can sit down and revisit this and see who wins and see who loses. But if you have been one of these people on the internet going, change, change, do something, well, you can't make a fuss now because at least they're going to make an attempt. And I am thankful for that because if wrestling is going to continue to flourish in 2025, everybody needs to be doing the best job possible. And damn it, I'm a positive Pete. And damn it, I believe. Now, of course, it's Thanksgiving, so I want all the things that you're thankful for. It doesn't have to be about wrestling. Go totally nuts in the comments for you. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Put this video on the screen. It is me talking about wrestling. What a world. Otherwise, my friends, I thank you for joining me as you do every single time. It really does make me feel good in my tootsie toes and my tum tum. So you have a lovely day. Make sure you eat all of your turkey, and I will see you soon.